Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for popping in today. As always, it's lovely to have your company and have a nice Tuesday crafty catch up. Now, thank you for the lovely comments I got last week. Honestly, I'm so humbled to get such lovely feedback from you all and I really appreciate it. Now, quite a few of you asked if I could do a festive design using the similar sort of techniques we've been doing recently. So I got my thinking cap on, well, my festive cap on and um, I came up with this. So once again, we're actually creating our design straight on our card blank ready for postage thinking that we don't need to buy any spare card there's no extra weight for when we're sending uh, cards at christmas as always we've decorated the envelope just so it's something again nice coming through the post and as i said last week i love to decorate the back we've got a little design running through to the back of the card for all those people like me that when they walk the dog and you've got cards in the window this is what they'll see and don't worry, if you're somebody who likes to add your name, you can always add your name here. We've got the gorgeous stamp as well, letting everyone know that we've used Lavinia stamps. Or you could just move the image up a little and then you've got further um, amount of space if you want to add anything. But I just think this is a lovely design from the back. I mean, to be fair, you could even do this. It's a nice design. You could do this on the inserts as well. I mean, again, once you start, honestly, you start creating these designs and if you're anything like me, you just get a bit carried away. A little bit like the mice, really. Um, I've used a couple of my favourite stamps today. I've been using this uh, feather stamp as a Christmas tree for many years now. Um, as you know, unfortunately, once it got in my head that that's what it was, I just find it hard to see it as a feather now. So I must apologise, Tracy. I know you drew, drew it as a feather. And it is a beautiful feather, but we all know my head is a very strange place, don't we? So that's what we're going to create. And I shall put the, that somewhere safe so I can keep an eye on it in case, you know what I'm like, I may just go off piece a little. And we'll start with our stamping first. So I'll just get my copy of paper ready. And somewhere I have a 7x7. Seven we're working on a 7x7 seven seven card blank today, ready-made card blank. If you're somebody who likes to make your own card blanks, that's great. I'm one of those, I have to buy them, I'm afraid. It's just, again, the way I am. Now, you can either have it so it stands, tent fold, or I'm just going for, for this way. But I'm going to turn it on the side, just because you know me, the way my head works. Now I've got my feather stamp on my Lavinia acrylic block and I'm going to use black, the Nocturne. And again, nice light tapping. And I want this over to this side so I've got room for my gorgeous little mischievous mice. So I'm going to put that there. So my Christmas tree's going here. And again, just nice, even pressure. There's a lot of detail in this stamp and I really want it to stamp well. Again, a little flex of the, the block just so we get that gorgeous stamping and we can put pressure in the middle. And there we go. It's just such a beautiful Christmas tree, isn't it? And then on with the mice. So... At the base, we have Minnie. So she's holding everybody up. So, And again, I could do the mice in, in brown. And again, it's totally your choice. I'm just going for silhouette, so I'm, I'm keeping with the black. But they do look lovely stamped in brown, should you wish. I mean, I must admit, this will be perfect for batch card making. And you could just alter it slightly. I mean, I love to batch card make, but just alter them a little. So I would possibly... Now I need to just get her. Let's just get her so she's just at the base here. Now my head may come in shot while I'm doing this, I'm afraid. Um, Yes, I would alter it about. I would stamp some in black. Also stamp some in brown. And just, just alter it about a little. So that's mini. And I reckon next we've got Tilly. Now let me just think which one's Tilly. 
I mean, again, you could play about and see how they... I love to balance them. It's one of the first things I did when I... Um, when I got these mice, I just, it was just something in my head. I woke up one night and thought, oh, I've got to balance them on each other's heads. And they look great picking fruit from the trees. I mean, there's all sorts of mischievous things you can have them doing. But I think they're perfect for just putting the star on this Christmas tree. So let's see if she can just go on top of head there. I'm thinking, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so she's nicely there. So next, I believe we have Moo. Let me just check which one. As I say, you could alternate them. This, they don't have to go this way. I mean, I did a card a while ago with them balancing on the beautiful little ladders we've got. I mean, there are so many things they can balance on. So... I reckon he just wants to stand on her hand there. So we need to put him there. <laughs> it's quite trying to do this live while you're watching me. I wonder if we have got him on a hand. Just look, he's just there. And then last of all at the top, I think this one's Tango. Right, come on Tango. You're the one who's going to add the star. I think in my excitement with Tango, I've just over-inked a little, so Mr Inky Binky is just going to have to help me out there. Right, now, we need you just balancing on there, Tango. Don't put your tail in her face, just there. I reckon. Look at that. Now, if you slightly, just put Tango back on there. Right, if you had um, a slight, where's my fine line, a slight gap. So you see here, just where, let me see where I'm pointing, you see here, there's a very tiny little gap just between. And if you wanted to make them join, just use your black fine liner and gently add so they look like they're joining. But I've got to admit, I'm, I'm happy with that. But I do want to just add a couple of lines so it looks as though they're balancing. And we'll put a couple there and here. You know, so the I just want a little bit of movement as though, as though bless them, they're wobbling. And the, have we got that star there, haven't we? And then speaking of the star, where's my North Star gone? Oh, here he is. Now, for the North Star, on my finished one, if you look, it's nice and gold. Can you see? So, to make that happen, we're actually going to start and I'm going to stamp it in the morning mist. I'm just going to turn that round because I have a cunning plan. I don't want to stamp it in black, so I'm coming in with the, the morning mist. Just want this nice and clean all the way around here. There we go. And I'm just going to stamp that there. Perfect. We'll pop that over there. Then we'll just give that a bit of a blot. Again. Slower drying ink, it's got a longer open time. So we just give it a nice block because I'm going to add some stenciling next and I don't want to smudge that. And I am a bit of a tinker for doing that. So we'll put those inks out of the way and I'm going to come in. The stencil I've decided to use today is the Replenish stencil and it's beautiful look. So it's got these gorgeous hearts and I thought for Christmas, beautiful hearts just blowing in the, in that snowy, snowy scene. But before we add that, we're going to come in, we're going to ground our Christmas tree. So we need our hill masks and I'm going to go for number one, which is the flattest one. And we're going to come in with our Della Blue. 
I'm just thinking that's a nice sort of Christmassy snowy. I want to keep this very um, low key with the colours. I don't want to add too much colour. So I'm going to place my mask just under, want under the mouse's foot there and under the tree there. And I don't want a lot of colour. So I'll ink my brush up, take some off on there. Always go on the mask first and then gently, gently, just slightly. Don't want too much. If I want to check, lift it up. Yes, that's perfect. I don't want any more than that. That's more than enough. And I'm just going to wipe my mask before putting it away. And that can be filed away. And then I want one of my circle masks. And again, I've put a little dab of Posca pen on here so that I can find it. Because the trouble is when things are made out of acetate, it's not easy to find them. And we're going to put that around our gorgeous star here. And I think we'll just look at what we think there. So again, I'm going to ink up. And again, always start on the mask and start at the bottom. You've got most ink on your brush when you start off. So you want your colour at the bottom, so at the base of the mask here, and then nice and light at the top. Again, this is just a background to give that lovely Christmassy. I mean, already for me, we're building up. Now this, you know, you could have, um, make this into a winter birthday, maybe have the mice climbing up um, a different tree. It doesn't have to be a Christmas tree. I mean, I'm thinking of all, all the possibilities, all the things they could get up to. Now, let's bring in our stencil. What did you say it was called? Replenish. Would be handy if I could remember, wouldn't it? Now, again, do take a bit of time looking. Because for me, the aha, that's what I want. Now, let me see. Can you, can you see? See this little heart? I know it's a bit daft, but I want that heart up there. And if I have that heart in that corner, and then I've got a lovely heart down here. And that just happens, that's the way. So again, I'm going to hold my stencil in place. Using the same colour ink, so we're going tone on tone. And I'm just gently, gently going to start at the base. And again, it is very gently, gently. And just come across... Round the mice and basically at this point you can add as little or as much stencil work just a little bit in the moon I don't want to completely cover it if I'm not sure how I'm going I can lift it down oh and actually that looks a little bit more up at the top there I think and then I think that's enough colour I think that's just the right amount and it just, it's so pretty. And as I say, it just keeps it all sort of nicely tone on tone. And the Della Blue is a beautiful colour. Now, I'm thinking for batch making Christmas cards, you could um, make a few of these in one go, couldn't you? And you could alter the colours. I mean, think of all your lovely colours. Confetti, I think, would make a beautiful one. Bermuda would make a beautiful one. So you could almost make a good selection. Now, we just want to do a few little finishing tricks. And just to make it look a little bit more Christmassy, we're going to stamp the Pound Holly. Now, I've got to be honest, this Pound Holly is an amazing stamp. I've made whole cards making a wreath out of this. And we're going to come in with our Shady Lane. Oh, look. That was clever, wasn't it? My, um... Right. School Berry, don't take it off over your work. Right, I'm just going to wipe... So this is where, with all it is, is obviously I've used this stamp so much, as you can tell. And sometimes stamps, they do, you know, they get glitter on the back, they get all sorts on the back. And it just means that they're not sticky. And what I need to do is take this away and just wash it in some warm, soapy water and let it air dry. But for the minute, I'm just going to wipe it with my inky binky and let's see if we can get it to stick back down just while we do this. Right, let's see. At least I didn't drop it on my work. Maybe I shouldn't say that too soon because I might do that next. Right, just check if my hands are clean. 
Right, so we're just going to have, oh, we're all right. I think we're all right now. We're just going to have one of these in this corner. And then turn my card round. And have one in this corner. And then just a couple at the base of the tree. But I don't want them to be too um, sort of proud as though the... So I want them almost hiding a little. So let's tear a little bit of this. And then let's sink it up again. And then let's just have one popping over there. So we're just making our copy of paper into a bit of a mask. And we're just going to sort of stamp the holly around the base, make it look a bit Christmassy. But as I say, I didn't want to have the complete, it's got quite a long stalk on this um, holly. Now look, I've got a little green smudge there. So do you know what? What we actually will do is stamp a whole one, I think, across there. And that's what you do if you get a little smudge, you just stamp on it. But we do need just the top of one just behind it. So I'll come in with this and just that little bit there. Yeah. And I do this, you know, I do talk to myself as I'm as I'm making my designs up. Now I am impressed because this is my first Christmas card this year, I think, is it? Oh, do you know, I do forget. But I'm definitely going to start early this year. And you lovely ladies and gents do uh, inspire me to get started early. So that's what we've got so far. Now, what I need is my piece of kitchen towel just to lean on. And we're going to bring in our pastel pencils to add a little bit of colour and what I want to do is I'm just going to get myself a couple of the blue ones and I'm going to add the colour on the feather oh come here but I'm not going to be over neat because I'm going to smudge my pastel pencil so I'm just adding, just roughly, and I almost just want to get the idea of this beautiful colour. So I've got a couple of different blues and I'm just working my way down. And I've got a deeper one here, so I'm just adding... And as I say, I'm going to smudge them like I normally do. Two reasons. One, it'll give the overall effect beautiful, just almost like a blue aura. And the other reason I want to smudge them is because it'll help fix them, because they are a pastel. Now again, if you want to fix them completely, like we do with our pan pastels, you can use a spray fixative. And there are some lovely ones on the market that have got glitter in. So that might be nice for your Christmas designs. I'm going to use my lighter blue now and actually just catch the edge of these beautiful, almost like fronds at the end of this feather, aka tree. And this to me is my little bits of tinsel and my extra sparkle. And then in with my biodegradable cotton bud and just give that a little bit of a smudge. And as I say, it'll just blend those blues nicely and just make sort of a blue aura all the way around my beautiful Christmas tree. Now it's up to you, you can colour it individually if you want. I'm just happy with that, I like that sort of feel. But what I do want to do is get my yellow and here we're going to treat the star. So I'm just around my moon here, going to add a little bit. Now try not to get the yellow on the blue too much because obviously yellow and blue we could end up with green. 
and again I'm using the other end of my cotton bud and just smudging that yellow a little. Now I can hear you shouting at me that my star is still grey. So bear with me. We'll add a little bit of, pop that back, check which end, that's the yellow end. So we'll smudge that. And yes, I know it's still grey. I can hear you. So in with my, my signal, my gold signal. And obviously I know exactly where the shape is. And I can go over that beautiful stamped image that Trace is drawn. And then I have the most gorgeous, shiny star. So can you see? And then we'll just add some detail to our gorgeous mice. Now you can leave them as they are if you wish. I'm just adding a little bit of detail with my white pencil just to give them a little bit of shape. You can see sort of where the, the legs are and the little tummies. And then here where her arm is. And I've got a little highlight on her tummy down there and just on her neck. Just for me, just gives them a little bit more movement. If you wanted to come in with your brown, you could add some brown to them. I just think the little bit of white just gives them a little bit of shape. And these little finishing touches, they don't take long, but to me, they just make all the difference. And what I'm going to do is I've got a red signal here. And this one is perfect for the berries on our holly here. Now again, I would at the same time stamp the back of my card, but you, you don't need to see me stamp that today. You know exactly how to stamp up on the back, don't you? So we've got our berries. So we need a few little finishing tricks. It just doesn't look Christmassy enough, does it? That doesn't look quite enough gel on there. That's better. Short changed on the gel. So let's come in with our white pen. Just add a little bit more highlight on there. Just on some of the holly. Just give it a bit more pizzazz. That's better. And let's have some glitter. So our stickles now as i've told you before mr stickles here and mr liquid pearls can be a bit rude they do suffer from wind so i always start them off on my mat and i'm going to paint with them so i've got some stickles there and i've just got an old water brush here and this is my painting my stickles water brush and I'm just going to add some sparkle for the snow here. And again, Christmas, we need a bit of sparkle. And I find by doing it this way, I get the glitter exactly where I want it. But also, I don't get any spits on my work. And um, the beauty of it is, you use less and it dries quicker. So we'll have a little bit on my tree here. I mean, if ever you've had to go at putting it direct and it spits and it ruins your card, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. So we'll wipe that up. Need a little bit more. So I'm coming in with liquid pearls just to add some baubles on the tree. And this one's the bronze. So again, give it a little tester. Yes, that's working. And we're just going to down and then straight up. And try and not overthink this. Lift straight up. And we'll get some nice baubles on there. And finally, we'll have some snow. Let's wipe that up. Get Mr Inky Binky on the job. I'll move that out of the way. That's looking lovely. I haven't added a sentiment, but I've got space here. 
for my sentiment. So let's have some Posca. So we'll have some large snow flurries. And then we'll just have some gentle little drifts over the mice. So again, we've that com got that combination of the two. And a little bit over the tree. And again, whether we're going for a flurry or a snowstorm, a bit over the holly. And as I say, don't hold your pen too close. Otherwise, before now, I've hit it straight on. And I think we've got enough snow there. And that's it. Our lovely Christmas design with our mice balancing that they've just put the star on top of the tree. And look how that sparkles. So that's the one we've created. Here's the earlier one. And just to remind you, if you wanted to have a go at decorating the back, all I've done is put, let me have a look, what's his name? I know you're all going to be shouting at me. He is Bibby from Basil and Bibby. So again, and a couple of the music notes. I think they're from the small music notes. And then there's the lovely stenciling in the background. So that's my little offering for this week. So if you're feeling like starting creating some of your Christmas designs, I'd love to see what you get up to. And maybe between us, we could actually make a really good start on Christmas. I want to try and be, you know, prepared this year. I mean, you know, we're at the end of May now. Some of us have just turned a year older. Mm. So, um, you know, June... You know, we're, we're nearly there, aren't we? Nearly Christmas. So <laughs> it's a bit cheeky, that, isn't it? So I think it's a great time to start. But like I say, it doesn't have to be a festive design. These little tinkers could be climbing up anywhere. So I'd love to see what you get up to. I hope you have a really good week. I hope June's good to you. You, you take care now. Much love and hugs from me. Bye for now. <laughs>